The following is a presentation of Project Independence and WCWP. Project Independence is the Aging in Place initiative of the town of North Hempstead. Welcome to Project Independence and you. Good morning and welcome to Community Talk Radio. This is Project Independence and you on LIU Public Radio. I'm your host, Rebecca Miller, along with co-host Otto Lose and show producer Christina Liu. Christina and I work together at the Town of North Hempstead Services for the Aging Project Independence, where Christina is the Director of Senior Citizen Affairs, and I'm the Deputy Commissioner. Good morning, Christina. Good, Good morning. Morning, Good morning. Good morning. Nice morning. No earthquakes predicted. No, no so earthquakes today. The sun is shining. I think we're starting off okay. I think we are. So let's, let's uh, talk about our guest today. This morning, we are talking to critically acclaimed actor Roger Hendrick Simon, who is in such films as the sequel to Wall Street and just finished filming Connaissance with Kevin Bacon and Kira Sedgwick. He is a founding member of the Yale Repertory Theater and is highly respected for his work with the New York Shakespeare Festival and London's Royal Court Theater, as well as a vast array of off-Broadway productions and films. Thank you for joining us today, Roger. It's great to have you. Rebecca, thank you for having me. Boy, you should be my agent with that intro. I mean, that was great. (laughs) Who was that guy? (laughs) Hopefully your agent isn't listening, but I'll, you know, (laughs) call me. We'll talk. (laughs) Okay, I'm ready. You also mentioned he's a star softball player. Oh, Oh, right, right. Well, that was before break. He is also a uh, softball athlete. Well, I don't know about star, what, what what my fellow players would say, but I'm out there. I'm out there working at it. Yeah, yeah, love it a lot. Good. Keeps so, us moving. Yes, yeah, definitely does. So you yeah. know, we're reading through your, I mean, array of not just acting, but your director and producing, and you're you know an educator. Um, it's just so interesting, and you know, at our enhanced age. Um, to have somebody continuing with a career. And was there a gap in time where you weren't acting and you you came back to it? Or have you just been sailing since, you know, since Yale? Uh, The answer in a short word is no. (laughs) There was no gap. Um, I would, you mentioned Yale, I would say, Way before that, I think when I came out of the womb, I, I was uh, destined for this in the, in the sense that my family was uh, was in the business uh, of theater. My father was a uh, uh, a cartoonist uh, and covered um, covered Broadway for uh, for the in the late. Uh, 1920s and early 30s and with uh, the New York Daily News, the New York Daily Mirror and a lot of a lot of publications that were were show show publications. My mother was uh, was a jack of all trades in theater and did did design and did a little acting and what have you. So I came out of a, a family of artists. And when you say, was there a gap? I don't remember Rebecca ever having any gap. <laughs> Um, it was natural. I, I think um, it was something I always not only wanted to do, I just enjoyed it. And I seemed to fall into that, uh, into that way of life. It was, um, it was just like some people are in families are lawyers. Everybody's a lawyer. Some people are doctors and they, uh, some people are hosts of radio shows, you know, and, I just, um, I just, I guess this was a natural thing for me, and and that continues to this day. Um, rebirth, uh, it, it's a nice word, you know that, you know when you're 81, which is what I am, um, to have a kind of rebirth. What that means, I think, is that you go through life. And you go through different periods of your of your work. Um, maybe in that way, it seems like uh, maybe there was a gap, but not really. Um, at this point, I guess I'm I'm um, 
I'm known a little more than, as an actor professionally, maybe than a director. Um, it just happened that that happened in the last uh, 15 years. Uh, before that, I think I was much more of a director I, I, um, professionally. Uh, so you go through different periods. I still direct, um, and I've always taught. I've always mixed teaching and education with professional work. Uh, that that always has been something I felt very strongly about. I think um, all those three things, for me, have always gone together rather than little, you know, kind of separate things. So gap... I don't really know if that applies to me, um, but I have the focus goes maybe in different um, in different directions at different times. That sort of happens. That sort of happens. You, I don't know. I don't think that was conscious in terms of um, uh, my choosing to go in different directions. Uh, I always kept all three going. Uh, teaching, acting, and directing. But most recently, when, you know, when you're lucky enough to have kids and and you're married and you have children, um, if you wait long enough, you start getting work from your kids because <laughs> they're, they're, they're all in the business as well, um, one way or another. Um, and uh, the acting came about recently in 2000, I would say the, the film acting, really came about uh, around 2003, four, five, maybe in that area, because my second son became a filmmaker. Uh, I was never really a filmmaker, um, and he was a filmmaker. Uh, he gravitated toward film. I He was in my Simon studio where I train actors, directors, and writers, and uh, he was there as a kid. They, all my kids were in my studio when they were young. <laughs> Um, and he was trained as an actor and a director. Um, and and then he got into film. So when he got into film, he started working with other young filmmakers who then said to him, hey, Dan, is your dad still acting? We need a we need an old guy for a lead in this role, in this play. And we can't get Jack Nicholson. He just uh, kind of hung up his <laughs> boots, you know. So uh, all of a sudden, Dan would say to his colleague, um, oh, yeah, why don't you audition him? This is back in 2006. The, the movie was called The Sublet. I auditioned. She liked me. And I had the lead role uh, in The Sublet. And that kind of started my film uh, career back in 2000 and I guess six, seven. So these things, rather than gaps for me. Right. They, they go in, in in different cycles, I think I would say, Rebecca. Yeah. When you, when you went from like something, I'm, I'm ve I've always been intrigued by the ability of actors to really get into the part that they're, they're playing. And uh, with your training, there's a lot of things involved. I could go on for a long time here, but anyhow, uh, there's a lot of things involved to me with how actors get, how do they get into these parts? And then the difficulty, like between a, a play, for example, and a film, a film is made up in pieces. So you you have to get in and out of the part. Whereas on, on a show, on a stage, you have to be completely in the part for two hours. And then you need to have a good memory. Uh, so my questions really tie in with memory and uh, the ability to to get into the part. How do you train people to do that? Um, you know, I I just finished an off Broadway run, uh, Otto, of a, of a very big role, and um, you know, memory is a, is is a um, is a muscle. It's like everything else. If you stop doing it, if you stop learning lines uh it's really hard to 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 get back on the horse and, and learn them and particularly uh when you're young uh even if you're young at 81 <laughs> you know you 
as a senior, we it's it's funny somehow uh, it's hard to uh, to learn as you get older lines. It gets harder. It, it, it it's a little harder. Um, I'm always admiring people who were young. That my God, you they just they pick it up so quickly in terms of memory. So uh, it is a trick, but it's not such a mystery. I think I think um, you you have to keep memorizing in order to stay in shape, just like an athlete. I think an actor is an athlete, uh, which is why softball and acting for me. <laughs> It, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, an actor has to not be in good shape. An actor has to be in great shape physically because you you have to express with every part of your body, your voice is part of your body. If your body's not in great shape, your voice is not going to be in shape. Uh, so part of being an athlete is having a memory muscle as well. And you've got to keep that in shape by constantly learning. This last role, I came off of directing a play uh, in January, and I had to go right into a lead role as an actor the end of January. And so I, I promised myself, Otto, that I would learn my lines ahead of time, <laughs> knowing that it would be really difficult once I got into rehearsal and the pressure to, to, to get through rehearsals without learning. I, it, and, and I didn't know my lines and it was a, a, a real nightmare for me. <laughs> I, I had to go from 10 to five every day rehearsing and then go home at five and do nothing but go over lines. And then the same thing in the morning before 10 and then go to rehearsal. And even though I had people cueing me, it took forever. And I was really, quite honestly, ner very nervous that I'd make it. Mm -hmm. So uh, learning and memory as you get older, of course, is harder. Um, you have to spend more time at it. And you really should plan to do it ahead of time as an actor so that you you can focus on the real fun part, the real interesting part, which is developing a character. Uh, and 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 doing what you're talking about, getting into that part. You can't do that if you don't know those lines, because you're then focusing on what do I say, what do I do, and that 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 is um, that takes away from what you're talking about. Getting into character, getting into character is 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 really a, a process. First of all, you study people all the time. And your characters are are often coming from uh, your observations of different people. Actors don't, uh, you know, they don't <laughs> they don't have textbooks. Their textbooks are lo is life. They study everything they can. When they're walking to rehearsal, they're working, they're watching, they're looking at things. So you you observe everything, and and that goes into each character you play, your observations of, of different people, particularly things you can steal for that role you're playing. And then you take your own self. And I think you have to understand who you are a little bit more than most people. Um, and you use what what is in you. And sometimes you use a different part of you for, for this character and you use another part of you for that character. And you try to mix all those things up. Um, and you try to, uh, you never escape yourself. You're always yourself. But you you also try to, to, to look at the character's uh, special traits. And you mm. really study those things and try to get yourself into that uh, rather than everything coming only to you. You try to... Uh, to 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 you, or use yourself as a base, and then and then think of the the, the 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 special things about that person that you're playing, and try to find that special thing in you um, that you can bring to that character. So um, it sounds complex. It does. <laughs> it, it sounds like Maybe. you need to have empathy for the character you're playing and and maybe once you kind of 
understand that character, like you're saying, you find a little bit of yourself, the lines then make sense. So it does take the muscle, of course, to remember, but if when you connect with that character and the script makes makes more sense, um, you know, and I'm sure, I mean, the difference between like, Otto, you were, you were talking a little bit about maybe versus Broadway versus a movie where you're doing it one time and then doing it every day, you know, or six, seven times a week, sometimes twice a day. Right. Um, Right. It, it, um, I think, uh, I, I must say I was trained as a theater actor. Um, my family were theater people, uh, for the most part. And, um, uh, although my dad worked for Paramount, uh, pictures and, and other film things doing the artwork and the, and the, uh, all of the, um, titles in those days, they had titles for films. My dad was the designer of Paramount uh, titles. But yeah, I mean, film, I always looked at as something, when I went to Yale Drama School in the middle 60s, 1964 to 67, if you wanted to do film, you had to go to LA. And and there, to a certain extent, there is still some of that. But uh, at this point in, in, in history, uh, film is being done all over. An independent film, of course, is done all over the country, all over the world, and particularly low-budget independent film. And film, to me, as a theater actor, uh, it wasn't really acting. To me, to me, acting was 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 doing a role and being on stage for three hours, and 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 not and not stopping and starting you know, you had to keep in character for those two and a half hours. In film, as as Otto mentions, you stop and start. You know what? Um, Let's get back to that. We have to yeah. take a quick break. Thank you so much. After break, sure. we'll continue talking with Roger Hendrick Simon. You're listening to Project Independence and you on LIU Public Radio. WCWP is your home for great music and great conversation. You'll find all that and more on WCWP.org. Listen live on the web, check out the lineup, subscribe to podcasts, and stay up to date on the latest station events. Get in touch with us and let us know if you like what you're hearing and find out how you can support or get involved at the only community public radio station serving Nassau's North Shore. Plus, sign up to get a free bumper sticker. It's all online at WCWP.org. I'm your host, Rebecca Miller, along with our co-host, Otto Lose, and show producer, Christina Liu. We are talking to Roger Hendrick Simon, acclaimed actor, director, producer, I believe too, and softball player. Mm-hmm. So that's that was for Otto. Uh, so, um, Great to have you on talking about, yeah, right, right. Softball, softball, outfield, way to go. Catch those flies. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. <laughs> Don't overdo it. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and try to catch those flies. Not always, but we're trying to get them, yeah. Right, right. Them. You know, another area, by the way, with uh, acting that I've always uh, respected and thought about is uh, I've gone to a lot of local theater and uh, – seen a lot of what I thought were really, really good actors in plays locally. And I think about the mental attitude that you have to have uh, if you are an actor who thinks you're going to go up to the level, high level somewhere. When you do your training, do you get into your your medical, your mental attitude of, of uh, you're going to have a lot of negatives and bad breaks and, you know, uh, you need to be resilient. And how do you, how do you cover that? Do you get into that at all? Yes. Uh, of course you do, uh, Otto. And and they do tell you that it's one thing to be told that it's another thing to live through it. And uh, that's the thing about school um, and training. Uh, the best training is doing it uh, and living through it. Um, and when you're young and you're told, you know, it's going to be tough, uh, you know, you say, yeah, it's for everybody else, but not me. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm able to I'm able to endure every, anything. So it's really about um, not being told so much 
uh, but really getting out there and 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 feeling what it feels like to be rejected over and over again, uh, and and that's part of the life uh, of our business. It's true of anything I think in life, of any job. There's rejection, but if you want the most rejection, get into <laughs> get into <laughs> theater, get into well, theater I, and film. I, I was uh, in you know. sales all my life. Uh, you know, business to business sales, and uh, right. you have to have a pretty stiff attitude there as well. Uh, you know, because you you don't win every time; you lose a lot of times. Uh, right. Again, you know, using softball or baseball as an analogy, a really good hitter only hits two and a half times out of ten in in the major leagues. That's pretty bad, actually. But when you think about it, mostly it's 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 failure. So um, you have to kind of have a mental attitude that um, you just you have to believe very much in yourself, which is not easy. It's easy to say and hard to do. There are times in, that you you could lose that uh, that confidence. Those are tough times, and you you really can't. You have to constantly uh, believe in yourself, and and yet you have to present. You can't present an arrogant <laughs> you know uh, totally arrogant uh, you, you've got to get along with people so you have to believe yourself but you have to have to kind of keep that in control also so that uh, there, there's some humility also um you know and you just to keep going to keep going to keep it, it, it's like um the question about you asked have there been any gaps mm. um Yes, a lot of successful people in in our business have had gaps, um, but you can't lose that confidence, even even when you have gaps where the work doesn't come. Uh, you have to find a way to fill those gaps. You have to have sometimes uh, a way to to sometimes make a make a living doing something else during those gaps. But if you if you get too successful <laughs> at the other thing, you're not going to keep going with with your acting and your directing. So it's a balance. You can't you 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 can't just say, "Well, I'm going to give up and just you know start waiting tables uh, for the rest of my life," which is what a lot of actors do when they're young. Um, I'll just keep waiting tables, and all of a sudden, uh, that's what you're doing. You're not doing any acting. You're just waiting tables because you can't give up the job. So you really have to find a way to keep going. Um, and that confidence and that being able to um, to believe that it's gonna it's it's gonna happen, but that I think what's what what's important is you can't just be in this business auto to get an Oscar <laughs> and uh, to get an Oscar or an auto. <laughs> or a Rebecca, <laughs> or or or, or not too many you know, awards given out, <laughs> right, right, because um, there is this dream, and you have to have the dream. You can't not have the dream. You've got to have a dream. It's part of being in this business, but you can't let the dream take you in the direction of I'm in this um, to get this this Oscar. Um, of course, you want it. Of course you want it. But the main thing about this is it's not for people that don't love this. You've got to truly love it. And by loving it, I don't mean getting the um, applause, which is part of it, yes. And, I, and it, it also isn't uh, getting the awards like the Oscar. Loving it is about doing it, about studying and practicing it, uh, about exploring the play, exploring the, the character. Uh, if you don't have a hunger for the process of of the of the craft of of the uh, of the art, most of it is craft. Very little of it is art. Art is when it really shines, but most of it, it when you rehearse, it's it, it's garbage. You know, most of it is trial and error, and it doesn't work. So you have to love. In rehearsal, failing most of the time, and and you have to love 
the process of, of trying different things and not knowing what the answer will be sometimes well into the play, even after it opens, there are things that maybe you don't understand and you're still exploring. So that's what you have to really love to keep you going uh, at this. Roger, I'm taking your class. Wherever it is, I want it, I want to be your student. That, that uh, well, I appreciate the things that. you kept saying is you have to keep going. And kind of in that vein, um, what's in your future? And is there anything in the arts that you haven't done or a theater you'd love to perform at, an actor you'd love to be with? Is there something that you haven't done that you would still love to accomplish? Wow. <laughs> Hit a home uh, run. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Um, ooh, now I got to really think about that, <laughs> you know? Um, is there something else? Um, you know... A role... This, um, this sounds... This so sure. Th this probably sounds maybe trite, but I, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. I, I want to keep doing what I'm doing, which is what I, I love, but I want to find a balance. I keep trying to find a balance. I'm, I'm so lucky to have a, a very loving family. I have three ch beautiful children. I have a, a grandson now. Um, they're all living close to me. Uh, they're very important in my life. My wife of 45 years passed away six years ago. Um, right. And uh, um I live, I live in New York, close to my kids. Um, I find that family was always important to me. Uh, and to find the balance between my love of uh, what I do professionally and, to, and, and my family was always a real challenge. And I'm not sure I was always great at it. Um, I tried, and sometimes I was better than other times. Um, but I want to keep thinking about getting that balance and enjoying as I get older, uh, the love of, of family and, and very close friends, um, that maybe as you get older, that becomes more important. I don't know. Uh, I think it becomes other, clearer. That's think, what is always important. But when think, we get older, we realize, right? Well, I, I can relate to this very much so, what you're talking about, because I'm the type, I, like you, I, I took sales as a profession. You know, I learned about it. I, I was, you know, I wasn't going to be a shyster salesman. I was going to be a professional. And uh, the difficulty, even today, frankly, I'm 87, the difficulty wow. of keeping a good balance, you have to work at. Like I want to make sure I, I'm fortunate like you. I have a good family, uh, mm. 10 grandchildren. Uh, wow. Many <laughs> of them live close to me. They live nearby. Yeah. Uh, yet I like to do things like what I'm doing here. I like yeah. to play golf. I like to bowl. You know, I like to walk. You know, it's a lot yeah. of things I do. So you get yeah. a little guilty once in a while because you do these things and you think you really ought to be spending more time at, at the other end of the spectrum. So yeah. I relate to you completely in that it, it's like an ongoing thing in your life. You know, you're always trying to come up with a balance. If you are smart enough to realize that your family is very important, uh, you know, not everybody thinks that way. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting subject. You know, how do you keep the balance? It's not easy. You have to yeah. get something. Yeah, I I don't know if I think about it as much as feel it, Otto. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it's an intellectual thing of thinking my family is important to me, but it's more feeling it's it's important. I think uh, either you feel that or you don't. Uh, and 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 yeah, it, it's um, you know, and also Otto, <laughs> I'm sure your family. It's like mine. They they don't want me with them all the time. I mean, no. They want you to play golf. They want you to play bowl. They want you busy. They want they want you to have a life. And and uh, so I'm quite aware that even though my son is right underneath, you know, he he's right below me in the apartment. Uh, his fiance and you know they're. <clears throat> I come, you know, I I don't want to be there all the time. They don't want me there all the time. 
So it's the balance. They they want me to have a life. They they want me acting. They want me directing. They want me. They want me teaching. They they don't you know they don't want to have to uh, have a guy sitting in a in a chair with a beer w- watching cars on the street that they have to take care of all the time. Uh, hopefully that day is long in the future. I hope it never happens. But um, but yeah, it's it's that's the balance. I I think to, to they want me as busy as I'd like to be. You know. Um, they don't want to spend time caring or worrying about me all that time. Well, you, I, I, I also unfortunately can relate to you about uh, losing a spouse. Uh, yeah. My wife died at a very early age. And uh, if you're uh, okay with sharing this, how did you get through that period of time? You know, like you, you keep busy. How did you get through that period of time? You had, had a happily married and, uh, 40 some odd years you said 46 45 nearly 45 and we, we would have been 45 a few more months uh i don't know if i got through uh to, to, i don't think you ever get through it Otto. i i think if you really have a a relationship for that long it, it's something that uh <laughs> you know it's always going to be there and and, and you're going to always have great uh uh re, you know you're going to miss that part of your life and i do i find that uh every day i feel uh, there's a loss uh how did i get through it? It, it what i did get through um i think our relationship between my wife sarah and i was um we were we were both artists my wife was a was an opera and concert singer uh she also was a novelist she was a playwright whose plays i produced in new york off broadway um we did films uh projects together um we we, our family did a lot of art projects together and my wife and i would our home was a was a film studio it was a concert hall we would bring uh sarah would bring her professional musicians uh from new york up to poughkeepsie they would try out their their carnegie hall concerts in our living room We, we had a community of we had a little art our home was an arts council. I mean, everybody came. And um, so that was the relationship. While I was doing theater, she was, she always had her music. She had her writing. So because we had uh, very busy professional pursuits uh, of our own, each of us, we also worked together a lot, but we also had individual pursuits so when she passed, I still had this individual pursuit. And that never stops. And in, a, in that way, my life never changed. So even though I miss the working together part, mm. the individual pursuit, the ambition, the drive, the love of what I did has never stopped. Therefore, a lot of people have said to me, gee, you, you don't seem to have been affected at all. You're just living. I, I believe I live almost the same way I did. Uh, the only thing is there isn't another person uh, that lives with me that is like my wife. Um, I have friends, very close friends. It's never the same. But it's it's having something which you love enough, your own individual work that I think has kept me going uh, if I'm able to, you know, I, again, I have not completely uh, uh, recovered. I don't think I ever will. But the main thing is, I think it's because we both had things that we did ourselves. And I think that's important in any marriage. I, I'm no marriage counselor, God knows. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, we had lots of ups and downs and 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 uh you know lots of things but i think when you depend totally on another person you're in trouble i agree with you 100% i i think a good marriage is a, res- a life is respecting and loving somebody uh yes and loving being together with that person but you've got to have your own life and the problems, I think, are when one of those spouses 
leaves us and you don't have that you're you're in trouble because now you're, you're swimming for life and and there and you've got to find something now and and i th I, I see a lot of people that go through that and it, it's very painful they they have to find something because they've they've lost the, the the main part of their life so it has to be somebody that is the main part of your life but only up to a point it Roger, can't be ever yeah thank you so much for sharing that and you too otto it's really beautiful um we we have to take a quick break but we will be back we will be back we're <clears> talking <throat> to roger hendrick simon you're listening to project independence in you on liu public radio Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS app store on Apple devices or the Google Play store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. Welcome back to Project Independence and You on LIU Public Radio. I'm Rebecca Miller, along with Otto Lopes and Christina Liu. We are talking to Roger Hendrick Simon, acclaimed actor, director, producer, softball player. And I have another suggestion. I just want to put, put it out there. I think you would be a great podcaster. You would have zillions of followers. You're so interesting and so informative and have had such great experiences. I'm I, I, Christina and I are listening to you and Otto speak and every word is just like important. And uh, yeah, wow. so, you know, well, you. if your agent isn't guiding you there. Call me, you know what it is. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll drink to that. This is water, by the way, not water. gin. I just want you. To, this is water. Um, it is still a little early. <laughs> yes, it is. And by the way, Otto, what you were saying, I mean, and what I just said uh, in the last segment, um, I'm almost uh, giving myself a pep talk as I say that because it's one thing to say it it's another thing to to really remember that that you have to keep going and 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 that you love what you do and that you're going to be okay and and you and and you know i mean that that's the the real challenge uh wow. i think i've been fa fairly good at it but still there are days when you know you forget it my wife it. died she was 40 years old which now makes that like 45 years ago, right? But you never yeah. forget. I don't forget today, even though it's 45 years ago. Uh, you know, you you go forward, but you right. don't forget. You know, you, you would adjust. And like we talk on this show a lot, uh, when you get older, some of, and I always use the word older, not old, but when you get older, uh, loss, the word loss goes on, all right? And there's always loss. There's loss of your own ability, your own capabilities, loss of friends, people, family, a lot of things. And yeah. I think your ability to adapt to loss and, ha and have your own life, as you pointed out, uh, as you go along is critical. You, yeah. you know, you, you, we're going to lose things. I mean, that's the way it works. You know? Right. Yeah. The old joke is, uh, <laughs> it's not so funny, but what part of the paper does it, do do you read first? The old bits, just to see you're not there, you know. <laughs> make, make sure you're not there, and uh, <laughs> you know. And and if you're I'm, there, you got to figure out what to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <A> typo. <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, but each day, yeah, we lose, you know. When you're younger, you don't think about it so much. But each day, there are people. Just the other day, Carl Erskine of the of the Brooklyn Dodgers passed away. My God, you know, he, he's. I don't know Carl Erskine, but I do know him because as a kid, I watched him pitch at Yankee Stadium in the World Series. I mean, these are these are part of your. You're losing part of your life every single day. There are people that are you know that have a connection to you, and you realize, oh yeah, you're you're on that. You're at that time of life, you know, and you know, I was time time 
with Carl Erskine. I was a Brooklyn Dodger fan. Yeah. Ebbets Field, the Polo Grounds, the Yankees. Oh, yeah. Stadium, Great. The whole bit. And yeah. I knew every player on every team back then, you know, yep. particularly the Dodgers back then. And Carl Erskine is the last of uh, the boys of summer. That's uh, right. Yeah. That's right. And, and, uh, he and was quite a guy. And, I there was a special about him on television, and he yeah. was. Uh, it's on uh, public TV if you search for it. Um, yeah, he was really very involved with a lot of good positive stuff uh, yeah. in his life beyond his baseball ability. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, well worth watching. Yeah. You know, I, I I must have sat next to you at Ebbets Field probably and didn't know it. <laughs> I, I I sat I sat in the uh, in, in in the uh, right field stands at Ebbets Field at 1952 World Series with a Yankee cap. My father brought me. I'm a Yan I was a Yankee fan. And boy, if you if you're a Yankee fan at Ebbets Field, even when you're nine years old, oh my, you you, you really get. <laughs> You 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 get the treatment from those Dodgers fans. Oh, yeah. oh my God, they really get. Are you it from the Bronx? No, I'm, I'm. I was born in Manhattan, and oh. and uh, the Dodgers are in Brooklyn. Right. Right. So but the Yankees so are in the Bronx. The Bronx. Yankees are in the Bronx, right? And no, I I I was uh, I was brought up in Westchester actually. When I was born in Manhattan, we moved to uh, to to uh, Westchester um, when I was nine. I think I was yeah nine years old and whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean it's uh, thank you for the podcast uh, plug. I I can relate to that because I love radio and and for many for a number of years I was a producer for National Public Radio uh, as part of my career and created a series called Simon Studio Presents, which were um, original radio dramas plays that I developed in my studio with my students uh, and gave them the opportunity to work with me in, in, in putting these plays together, writing them, developing them. We then presented them first as, as live plays. And then we would go into WBAI, which is right in Manhattan and do them live on the radio. And then they were recorded. They went out, on WNYC, they went out across the country. Um, it was a very exciting time. It, it uh, the problem, to, you know, with radio drama now is it's called audio drama. There's no radio drama anymore um, in this uh, in that sense. And I was always interested in new work, new new writers. Um, I loved the classical radio, of course, but. I was interested in giving new writers in my studio who I were tr I was training and developing new writers in my Simon studio as part of my 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 technique uh, to to give actors, writers, and directors uh, the experience of all working together in one class, and then out of that would come these productions. And I thought that was more exciting than doing Stella Dallas and mystery theaters from the 1930s and 40s. But the producers of radio really love the old stuff. Uh, they they think that's where the the, the listeners are really going to go for that, and they were very very um, hesitant to put new stuff on radio. But the new stuff is always challenging to people. It's always harder it to is. put new new things on radio on television. They want the more tried and true. It's very hard, and I was always trying new things and still. Still, that's what I do. Um, somebody said to me, <laughs> Roger, why didn't you sell out? I said, God knows I tried. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's just, it's, it, it never seemed to, to work for me. I was always more interested in developing new stuff, new, new actors, new writers, new directors, new projects. That's just what I do. Uh, I mean, I was grew up in, in the world where you would lay down on the floor and look at the radio and listen to Captain Midnight and Gangbusters and, you know, all that's these it. shows. Uh, yes. Send away for your secret decoder. Uh, oh, okay. in the, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, you know, it, I, I, I don't like part of being old, -er, older, older. Not old. There you go. Older. 
the thing that I don't like about it is when people say, oh, it, it's not like the good old days, you know, I, I really hate what's going on. And they say, I mean, we all feel something like that. I can't deny that sometimes I feel like that about certain things. But to, to focus on the positive stuff that's going on today is hard because there's so much, seems like so much negativity in 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 and uh, and violence and and death and all that going on, I think we forget that in any period in history there was that. I think we think this is the worst ever. I think every generation sort of has some of that feeling, but I think the reason we feel that today more is because it's the social media and TV and and we get it so much now. We didn't so always quick. have as much of that that we weren't quite aware of it like we are today. It's being pushed at us all the time because it sells. It's very marketable. People don't want to read about night. They say they want to read about nice things, but they buy the paper that has a murder on the front page, you know? Yeah. And, and right. it, no. so it's yeah. kind of, it, it's hard to um, not say things were better in the old days, but I do feel that we are auto missing uh, I think we're missing the spoken word now. Uh, the the thing that radio is best at, being able to talk uh, and not have sound bites, being able to get into discussions, being able to talk about issues like you guys do on this show about a very important segment of society, seniors, uh, radio is 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 there's no there's no equal and and we're missing some of that and 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 it's all visual today it's all about the visual and, and the special effects and to me uh it's always been about the simple stories about regular people uh hmm. a, a good a good story uh, wow. I don't need technical effects. Um, I'm a little bit shy of that, of no, the I technical agree. stuff. I like, <laughs> I like, I like a little story. I like, and um, and I think we're missing an emphasis today on on that. I think it's hard to get those uh, those those things out today. Um, if you go to the movies, you see these big movies now, and, and it's it's. Um, I miss I miss that, and um, so I'm trying to keep that going in my in my studio in my training uh, with with actors, directors, writers, and whatever. And um, it, it it it's something that I I don't think we should we should forget how important words are, ideas are, spoken words, um, thoughts that come from the vocal. And and not just the visual t stories, but but, well, we but the word, movie, the word. We watched yeah. your movie this week, Love and Kilnary, and uh, both my wife and I really enjoyed it. Uh, well, thank you. A lot of the reasons you just described. It was a good story. It was entertaining. It didn't have four hundred sound special effects involved. Uh, you know, it was just a good story. It was fun. So you won an Oscar for us. So you're maybe an well, Oscar. <laughs> you got an auto. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, that's a case in point of a very simple uh, production. We did that on on uh, you know on the fly. I mean, it was put together with with uh, you know with very little, um, and it's a story about senior citizens uh, mm -hmm. who who, who uh, live in a very quaint little village. Yeah. It was shot in New Hampshire, and um, it, it's a very, I think, very funny and very kind of, as you, I really appreciate that you enjoyed it, because that that movie uh, gets to the heart of people, and um, it, it's also about seniors who, <laughs> who find a new lease on life that they didn't expect to find, and that's always something that I think is exciting, and I think I think your audience would 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 love to watch I, I a, a movie like that. I mean, I, yeah, I have told people yeah, it's about it's it. on 
It's on Amazon Prime. It's on uh, yeah. other it streaming networks now. Cents. <laughs> you know, Roger, it's we talk a lot about this on our show. The population is really the majority of the population is aging. We are, you know, people 60 and older are probably close to the majority of the population, which we've never experienced before. So the kinds of people and things you were talking about, you know, we're here. It's just for some reason, you know, we just don't have the voice. You know, we, we talk about this a lot. You know, seniors have, you know, purchasing power. They enjoy travel and entertainment. We don't always want the early bird special. Um, <laughs> you know, so films like this that you made are, are important for it. And, and we need to see people who are older, you know, enjoying life and, and what's happening as, as we age. So I hope that, you know, we can get through to Hollywood and, you know, change that stigma that aging just isn't sexy because it yeah. is, it's really, um, Absolutely. it's, it's enjoy. It's just like yeah. Otto says, I know I, I can't remember who he quotes, but it's not retirement. It's rewirement. Right. Yeah. Rebecca, it, you know, it, it, it uh, absolutely. But I do think it has changed in that way. And I think you, 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 you see more films now, uh, about seniors, uh, and you see more films with um, uh, seniors in 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 much bigger capacity and, and roles that are um, that are very very strong, and uh, it's because seniors are demanding it, and they re and they go to the movies, and right. and they're the biggest segment of, of 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 our population, or one of the biggest, if not the biggest, and. So I think it's it's already changing. I see that. Um, I, it helps me as an actor. I'm getting better roles. Yeah. I'm getting more chances. Um, you know, it, it's I'm not just the sidekick. You know, it, there there are, there are films that really focus now. I mean, actors like Michael Douglas, who I uh, acted with in Wall Street Two, um, <laughs> he's a senior. I mean, I never thought of him as a senior, but he's a senior, and he's still going strong. And 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 um, uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, there's so many. Jane uh, Fonda. Yeah, Jane Fonda. Uh, you you see you see a lot of people in the senior area now taking more active roles in Hollywood and in in, in independent film, um, much more than you saw, I think, before. I think um, also, I think, I feel anyway that the society is recognizing seniors a little more than they did. Um, people understand, I think now that people are not, I mean, my grandmother was looked old when she was 50, uh, you know, and and uh, she wanted to look old when she was 50. Right. Uh, and she didn't want to, you know, and you see, uh, you see women and men uh, just dressing differently who are seniors. I'm not talking about wearing mini skirts or, you know, whatever. I'm talking about just they don't look like they're not dressing with old clothes. So they, you know, that's a whole attitude change. I, I think that's happened in the last 25 years that, I, yeah. that I've seen it begin to, to go in that direction. I think that's encouraging. The United States is very youth oriented more than many countries around the world. Uh, so it may have taken us longer, but I think it's happening. I think it's beginning to, it could, it could, it could happen more. Of course it could happen more. It should happen more, but I think it is happening. You know, you mentioned something that also triggers me and that is special effects. Uh, the movies that a lot of them that come out, the big blockbusters with all the special effects, that seems to be, there's a generational thing, all right? Uh, like, I can't go to the bowling alley without purple lights and 12 televisions right across the front of the bowling alley. And when we bowl with the hopefuls, we tell them, don't put any of that on. Uh, we just want to bowl. And right. it seems yeah. like the need, like when you go to a sporting event, like the, the Mets or whoever you go to, they're telling you how to applaud and how to cheer. Uh, get it up to 800 decibels, uh, you know, do this, do that. 
when you used to go to Abbott's Field, if you weren't going to applaud, you applauded. You know, it wasn't like it, nobody had to tell you to make it louder. Uh, so louder yeah. is not better, and that's a big generational thing. Yeah. Remember the old Dodgers Symphony? Oh, yeah. They were, the, 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 there was, a, was, the it was like a Gladys Gooding. Gladys Gooding on the organ. Yeah. I mean, this was this was community stuff. And, and the Dodgers used to live right in Brooklyn with yes. those people among the people. They yes. didn't they didn't have these, you know, homes away from. They lived with the people right on this in the same neighborhood as Ebbets Field. Roger. And, and, yeah. You're going to have to come back. <laughs> Will you come back? <laughs> well, <laughs> we, well, we have to go to break. Um, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. We want to thank you extremely. It was wonderful having you on the show, Roger. Hendrick Simon for talking to us today. It was was a pleasure. It was was a very enjoyable. Thank you, guys. Pen pal, whatever. (laughs) Otto, you heard it here. Um, Rebecca, can I tell people, can I just tell people how to get in touch with us at the Simon Studio if they want to watch a class on Zoom? Absolutely. if I mean, most of you folks are in Long Island, but we have people on Zoom that come in from all over the country, all over the world who want to take a class. If they do want to take a class, they can do it on Zoom with me and with our studio. Um, my email is rhsstudio at gmail.com. Again, rhsstudio at gmail.com. The website is www.thesimonstudio.com. If you email me uh, and you want to come, we meet on Thursday evenings, 6 to 9.30. Roger, you know what? You the link. People can call 311 and, and, get, and speak to Christina or myself, and we will make sure that they get all that. We do have to go. You're listening to Project Independence in You on LIU Public Radio.